Definition time, limit of a sequence. Well, and limits are already kind of tricky anyway, so yeah. really pay attention to what's going on here. So the idea here is we have some sequence of numbers, and we want to think about if we could approach infinity in that sequence, like the number of terms. Whoa, only Chuck Norris can get to infinity. Yeah, so um, sometimes it works out that a sequence... Um, is actually headed towards a particular number, right? which means the limit does exist and it gives you some actual number, which we're calling L here, but it you'd actually get like five or yeah, something. Yeah, it'll be like 27 or yeah. one third or something like that. When that happens, we say that the sequence converges and that L is the limit of the sequence. But otherwise, like, like if we can't end up getting to some number, um, because it either just keeps getting bigger, like bigger and bigger numbers, or smaller and smaller numbers towards negative infinity. Maybe it oscillates. Yeah, it goes back and forth, back like and one, forth between, negative one, yeah. one, negative one. So those are cases where the limit's not going to exist, and we call, or we say the sequence diverges. Right. Um, so on these four sequences, we're going to figure out if they converge or diverge, and if they converge, we're going to give the limit. A converges. Okay. How do I know? I don't know. Okay, well, let's look at it. Okay. I start with 1 over 1, which is just 1, 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth. If I keep going, 1 fifth, 1 sixth, 1 seventh, 1 eighth. What's happening is I'm getting smaller and smaller numbers, right? Yeah. Because whenever I make the number on the bottom of a fraction bigger, it makes the actual number itself smaller. So what happens is as I try, if I try to plug infinity in here, which you can't really do, That's but a big conceptually, number. I'm gonna plug in one over ten jillion billion. Yeah. So and your calculator won't do that, but you could actually take your calculator and do like one divided by a hundred, yeah. and then do one divided by a thousand, and do bigger and bigger numbers, and you should notice that the There's bigger the number, in there. the closer and closer we're getting to zero. Right. So that means that this sequence A does converge, like Hazelwood said, and its limit is zero. Think it's of this as zero. Think of this as when we're looking at the limit of the graph. Are you eating right now? You are just keep talking. So what if we took the graph one over x and we looked at the graph of one over x and we looked at the limit of that as x goes to infinity? And what happens like on in that behavior. like in behavior, and what happens on that is the graph of one over x approaches zero. And since it approaches zero, even though it technically never touches zero, we go, you know what, this has a limit of zero. That's the same thing that's happening right now with the limits of, of the sequences. They're going to approach something, although they're never going to touch it. And we've seen this before with all the different graphs that we've investigated this year. Right. So this next one, they didn't give us a handy formula. So this was A. I'm going to have to try hard to make sure that you can tell what's, what's working What's where. going on there? Okay, so it says 2 over 1. So if, if we wanted to write the, an explicit rule for this, like the bottom we could call n, like the first term has a 1 on the bottom, mm -hmm. and on top it has n plus 1. Right. And then you can check and see if you look at the pattern, like the next term is the second term, so that's a 2 on bottom, 2 plus 1 is 3 on top, so right. that works. So uh, if we think of this like n behavior, we're saying as we get bigger for n, as we go closer and closer to infinity, is this actually going to head closer and well, closer to a number? Well, we'll need to use L'Hopital's rule. We're not in calculus, so we can't do that. But that's really easy to tell us. Okay, so we have to use the tools that we have right now, Mr. Hazelwood. We don't know calculus. Partial fraction decomposition. <laughs> we that's just did wrong. That. That's not wrong. No, you like use... you can't use... Why couldn't you? Because there's only one thing. So it'll be really easy. So plug this into your calculator. How about just separate out? Behavior. Look, it's going to be n over n plus 1 over n. That's How not, hard is that? That's not partial fraction decomposition. That is too. I just separated it into two different fractions. That's a partial fraction decomposition. And n over n reduces to 1. So you have 1 plus 1 over n. Now, that is partial fractions. Okay. It's just easy partial fractions, <laughs> which makes it not seem like partial fractions. you got a chip on your arm. What the... So what's the limit of this? Well, we just said that 1 over n, this first sequence, would go towards 0. And so really, we just have 1. Just 1. And it, it, the limit of a constant is just that constant. Yeah. So um, And you can, though, you can plug this into your calculator and graph it, and you're looking at the n behavior right. as we go to infinity. Or you can just plug in bigger and bigger numbers for n and see what you and get. See what you get. Mm -hmm. But they should start getting closer and closer to 1. Yes. Yeah.
Okay, next sequence. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? Hazelwood. Yay! All right. So this should be pretty easy to see that this, oh, this converged, by the way, because we got it's a not, number. It's not in green or pink, though. Oh, well. So this one, though, is going to diverge because as you continue your sequence, you get bigger and bigger numbers. Every time, every time, every time. So don't try and make it converge. No. I mean, you're not getting close to anything Yeah. at all. It, I mean, if anything, you're getting close and closer and closer and closer to infinity, which, which means it means diverges. Diverge. Here we have negative one, positive one, negative one, positive one, and so on. Mm -hmm. And so the thing is, is that just keeps going back and forth between those two. It which means oscillates. It's, it oscillates, which means that it diverges. Yeah, it's divergent like those books. Yeah, it is not at all the same. I well, mean, kind of. They are. Never mind. Don't they all die at the end? Is that, oh, does that ruin it? Oh, shoot. <laughs> Not all of them die. Okay. Okay. Good. Example right. four, finding limits of sequences. Determine whether the sequence converges or diverges. If it converges, give the limit. Didn't we just do that? But now they're doing it. They're oh, a little different. Us they're a giving us the actual thing. Yeah, okay. And so this is where you, if you graph it or you remember your horizontal asymptote rules. Right. It's really helpful. Like we right. had a rule for horizontal asymptotes that if they're the same degree on the top and the bottom, all you have to do is take those coefficients. I hate to interrupt. This guy's name is EdTech Caveman. That doesn't make any sense. Would you stop getting distracted? Sorry. Okay. If the degree on top and bottom are the same, you just take the coefficients from in front of the Then that's variable. all there is to it. It's just like the horizontal asymptote. Yeah. So this converges, by the way. To converges three? Converges to three. Right. And you could graph it and see. No. Degree is the same on the top and bottom there, no, right? Is no, it, this is, is squared three and on that's bottom? a three on oh, the bottom. Oh, okay. All right. So, okay. So the if the degree is bigger on bottom. Goes to zero it goes every time. Goes to zero. Yep. And so that converges. Three on the top, two on the bottom on the last one. Okay. So when we did horizontal asymptotes, we said, hey, that's not a horizontal asymptote. Mm. That's a slant asymptote. Hey, divergent. So that means that it diverges because what's happening is as we... As we head towards infinity, we're still going, we're going up. to continue going up. Yeah. Hey, that wasn't too bad. Yeah, no.